today I'm going to review Miracle on 34th Street. Stop it! Turn it off! That won't work. It's no good. But what do you make a trailer for? To give the public an idea of what kind of a picture to expect. Miracle on 34th Street came out in 1947 and it was initially called The Big Heart in the UK. It was written and directed by George Seaton based on the story by Valentine Davis. Music was by Cyril Mockridge. It runs 96 minutes. It cost $630,000 and was a massive success. It won three Academy Awards. Best Actor in a Supporting Role for Edmund Gwen. Best Writing Original Story for Valentine Davis. And Best Writing Screenplay for George Seaton. It was also nominated for Best Picture, however it lost out to The Gentleman's Agreement. Valentine Davis also wrote a short novelisation of the tale. 20th Century Fox made a big promotional trailer for the film, showing a fictional producer roaming around the studio backlot. Hey Rex, how are you? Ed, how are you? Good to see you. How's the ghost of Mrs Muir? It's pretty good, I think. How's New York? Fine. Say, Rex, have you seen Miracle on 34th Street? Yes, saw the preview. I've never heard laughs like it in the theater before. Oh, is that right? Now, don't miss it. I was crazy about it. You really think we've got something, huh? I don't know whether the women will like it, but it's a great man's picture. In 1985, it became the first full-length black-and-white film to be colorized. The film was remade in 1994 as well as lots of TV versions and plays based on the story. The film stars Maureen O'Hara, John Payne, Edmund Gwen, Jane Lockhart and an eight-year-old Natalie Wood. So the plot of this film's a good one. In this Christmas classic, an old man by the name of Chris Kringle fills in for an intoxicated Santa. He proves such a success at being Santa Claus that he's soon doing regular appearances. However, Kringle surprises everyone by claiming he really is Santa Claus. And this leads to a court case to determine his mental health. And you can watch it in two versions. There's a colourised version and there's a black and white version. But I I prefer to watch films in the original black and white. I don't like it when they colourised black and white films. Right at the beginning you see this Santa Claus who's drunk as usual. Always happens in films, a drunk Santa. Ho bloody ho! Hey Phil! Why the hell are all these stars? Santa's always drunk in these films and television shows. Yes, Bones, it's all the time. This reminds us of the, the Twilight Zone episode I reviewed, Night of the Make. There was a, a drunk Santa Claus in that. Oddly enough, this film it influenced the Twilight Zone episode. The similarities. The cast's great in this film, all of them. Especially Edward Gwen. He has to be the best Santa Claus ever. Natalie Wood's good as well, even though she's just eight year old. She's one of the best child actors I've seen. And she'd go on later to be really successful. Maureen O'Hara's good as well. She plays a mother and she doesn't like her believing in Santa Claus. She wants her daughter to be brought up with reality, not fantasy. Hey, Phil, I know what I'd like to give her for Christmas. <laughs> Go on, stop talking bloody dirty all the time. What I like best about this film is the fact that he might not even be Santa Claus. That he might be a man with mental problems who just thinks he's Santa Claus. Yeah, he's not bloody Santa. He's just a bloody loony hard fella. I don't know, Bones, it's hard to tell. Because he doesn't really do any magic in the film. Everything he does can be explained. For instance, he talks to this girl in a foreign language, so maybe he just knew his foreign language. Well, I didn't know what to do. Hello. Ich bin blöd, dass ihr gekommen bin. Oh, Ben sind ihr Klaus. Ja, sicher. Ich wüsste, Bell. Ich war sicher, dass ihr euch selber kreipen. Natürlich. Sag mal, was ihr so willen haben. And the bit where he gets them a house. He kind of led them to that place though, like showing photographs and things. So there's an explanation for everything he's done. So it's left to the audience to decide. Was he Santa Claus or was he just a nutter? He actually ends up going to court uh, to see if he's mental. That's probably the only bad bit about the film. It slows the pace of the film down with it being a longish scene in the courtroom. And the judge, he's just wanting to get elected again. He's kind of like wanting them to be classed as Santa Claus, so he looks good. Although the film's got lots of humour, it also shows 
people being selfish and greedy. And I expected this film to be a very sentimental with it being a Christmas film, but it isn't. So at the end of the film, it's great how they made the audience decide if they believe this man is Santa or if he isn't. And it's a bit like kids believing in Santa Claus. Do they believe in Santa or not? So the film's a little bit like art and reality merged together. Faith is believing in things when common sense tells you not to. Don't you see? It's not just Chris that's on trial. It's everything he stands for. It's oh, kindness Fred. and joy and love and all the other intangibles. Oh, Fred, you're talking like a child. You're living in a realistic world, and those lovely intangibles of yours are attractive but not worth very much. You don't get ahead that way. That all depends on what you call getting ahead. So overall, Everybody. I thought this was a great film. A little bit overrated, though. It looks great, and it's got some great performances. So out of ten, I'm going to be generous and give this one a nine. Nine out of ten. You can go as a good like it. It's a good film, Phil. But that fella's not bloody Santa. He's just a bloody old nutter. Okay, everybody, bye. See you next time. Like, subscribe and share. Bye. Bye. What do you mean by drinking? You know it's not allowed. A man's cold. A man's got to do something to keep warm. I'll warm you. I ought to take this cake. <laughs> I ought to. Uh, somebody, Julian, get some black coffee. Uh, plenty of it. Yes, sir. Uh,